Hey there, I'm Heather Beadle from the ASPE group at the University of Oklahoma, and today I'm going to talk for just a few minutes about SHAP, one of my favorite methods. So SHAP is something that we're going to use to explain our machine learning attributes or results. <laughs> so as you may know, that when you are using an algorithm, particularly for seismic attributes, the algorithms are seeing statistics. So we can input in all of these different seismic attributes into that algorithm or black box if you want to simplify it. And what we get out is some sort of result. In this case, we're using random forest for seismic facies classification. But what I want to know as the interpreter and the geologist is what exactly is going on in that algorithm. So we know that machine learning models tend to pay attention to a set of rules, typically statistical in nature, in multi-attribute space. And so the idea is, is if we can understand these rules, perhaps we can have more confidence when we're making our seismic interpretations on the machine learning models facies classification outputs if we understand the rules that are going on in there. So I'm going to show this through a quick demo with the Canterbury Basin data set. So you can see over on the right hand side, I have a time slice through the amplitude data. There's some interesting features you could start to see, and you can look at the vertical section on the top of the screen in the amplitude data. This is a foreland basin that was formed during the Cretaceous Paleogene, and we're going to be looking at the Myos Miocene-Pliocene <laughs> interval, where there's all sorts of sedimentary siliciclastic fill. Uh, there's got fluvial fluvial environments, deltaic, marine environments, and so there's these overlapping channel systems, overbank deposits, all that really fun stuff that is kind of uh, complicates the seismic but is really fun to explore and see. And so we're going to kind of move through some examples of this. And so typically if you're doing machine learning, the first thing you want to do is um, get a more quantitative understanding of this machine learning model. So now we're looking at that time slice as I've uh, had it output in my random forest classification. I've got three different classes, background, channel, and turbidite. And so if we look at this voxel, which is where that yellow star is, um, kind of what we would want to know mathematically or intuitively is, okay, well, the algorithm seeing that the total energy is more than 400. And so in that case, it would be classified as a turbidite or a channel. Um, or if the algorithm is seeing that the total energy is less than 400, perhaps that's background or channel. So we're starting to try to see the math behind the decisions, kind of like a flow chart. Uh, if we look at another attribute, perhaps dip deviation, if it has a lower dip de deviation, it's more likely to be a channel. Uh, we could look at GLCM contrast. So any seismic attribute that we could put in there, we can kind of start to see this decision uh, matrix. And so this is this is really key for seismic interpreters. And so other things that we would like to see from our machine learning algorithms are, okay, well, we're predicting based on the information given that there's a 91% chance that this voxel is shale. So we can work through it in a very tedious mathematical voxel by voxel kind of localized method like that. But of course, I'm talking about SHAP, so when I say, is there another method to help the interpreter kind of see into the model? Yes, it's the SHAP method that I've been talking about. So SHAP stands for Shapley Additive Explanations, and it's a really great model um, and set of algorithms that's freely available. So they've got a GitHub, README files, all of that. So I encourage you to try it out. Um, but what SHAP does is it tries to understand the importance of each feature. And so I like to explain this kind of like if you were playing a, uh, you're the coach of a soccer team or, or football team, and you had a whole bunch of different players, and you want to figure out which player is the most important to my team. So kind of like, okay, which attribute is causing um, the, the facies to be classified as a channel versus a turbidite? Okay, so... So follow with me, we're using a little bit of game theory. And so in this case, what SHAP does is it iteratively works through all the different combinations of soccer players or attributes using a leave one out method. So where it's taking out one attribute or one soccer player and then seeing what the classification or maybe the score, the score of your game is. And then based on um, all those different combinations, it assigns values. So you end up with a SHAP value, which tells you how important that feature, whether it's a soccer player or attribute, is to the prediction. So winning the team, winning the game, or being classified as a channel or turbidite. And so what SHAP ends up giving you is both local, so this would be at the voxel level, 
predictions or global. So for the entire model, what matters for this to be classified as a channel. So what's great about SHAP and why we've been using it a lot in the ASPE group is that it's really consistent. So mathematically, the sum of all the features or attributes equals the difference between the actual prediction and the average prediction. And so it's, it's very consistent um, and it can explain the behaviors both at that voxel level and at the overall like model behavior. So you can query it with um, global or local visualizations. So here we've got a summary plot on the right hand side and I'll explain these in a future video. But in this case, it's showing us, okay, over your entire model, if GLCM homogeneity is high in value, it's more likely to be classified as a channel. So it's very important. Whereas um, if we go down here towards the bottom, K-curvedness, low values of K-curvedness tend to be with the facies that are not classified as a channel. So I'll break this down later in another video in more detail. And so that's kind of like just a quick summary. Um, this is the first in a series of a few <laughs> that will go through all the different SHAP outputs. So if you want more information, we have tons of it up on our website. So we're the ASPE attribute, um, the ASPE consortium at the University of Oklahoma. Uh, we've, we specialize in seismic attributes and we've got our YouTube channel and LinkedIn and a whole bunch of information. So I encourage you to go there. And of course, I thank our sponsors. <laughs>